Very welcome, everybody. Um, before I start with this lecture, uh, I have two announcements to make, official announcements. The first one is that this lecture is going to be filmed and will put on the internet. So if you said this morning to someone, you would be somewhere else, this is time to leave the room. <laughs> okay, you're all, all honest people, very well. Um, the second announcement is that this lecture is in English. Um, there are two reasons for it. The first reason is that it's going to be on the internet, so our English is a uh, natural choice, I think. And the other one is that uh, I work for an institute that, is, uh, that uses the English language, so uh, that's why um, this whole lecture will be in English, but I will keep it as uh, simple as possible, and uh, from time to time I will put in some Dutch words uh, if I think that is appropriate. Okay. Um, oh yeah, f before I forget, there is one addiction we all have and that's using a cell phone. I have to ask you to switch off your cell phone. Just pretend that you are in a cinema and that Star Wars, the new latest film from Star Wars Rogue One is about to start. If you're not into Star Wars, then just pretend that you are in, in a plane and about to take off. Thanks very much. Okay, I think it's time to get started. This is my lecture and my lecture is entitled When Size Matters Advantages of Weighted Effect Coding. And uh, well in many instances um, uh, uh, size matters and we have one example over here. We have an elephant and a mouse and because the elephant uh, is much heavier than the mouse, the so-called teeter tutor in the English language in in Dutch, of course, it's wipwap, and I do like the word wipwap much more than teeter tutor. Um, but uh, this is the result. So um, uh, the elephant is much heavier than the mouse, and we get this as a result. Well, if the elephant and the mouse would be equally weighted, we would get uh, something like this. It would be imbalanced, right? And before weighted effect coding was invented, this was the situation. But because we put weight into the elephant, we get this. And I will try to explain to you today how we made the elephant heavier than the mouse, okay? Um, for, uh, I'm not sure uh, whether everybody knows me. My name is Manfred de Grootenhuis. I work for the Institute of uh, Social Cultural Research. Attached to that uh, institute, there is a um, student association which call themselves Mosaic. And they were the people who invited me to give this lecture. So thank you very much for this um, invitation, and I thought, well, before, uh, because it was a rather um, well interesting invention, we uh, we have to t to uh, we, we published about. Uh, we decided to make this. We, we choose a little larger room, and uh, we invited some other people as well. And uh, thank you very much that you are uh, that you are here. Okay, well, um, to explain to you what weighted effect coding is all about. Um, I use an example from the United States, and we use the wages in the United States. And we have two research questions we like to answer today. First res research question is, uh, is it uh, in America uh, the wages are not equally uh, distributed across the four uh, important racial categories, whites, blacks, Hispanics, and Asians? That's research question number one. Research question number two is that the effect of education uh, on income is not equal across racial categories. So we know that if you uh, have a higher education, your income will be higher as well. That's no secret. But it might be that for uh, a higher educated uh, white American, the income may be higher than someone who is black and has the same educational level. Okay, so we like to uh, investigate whether that is the case. So that's our second research question. Okay, let's first take a look at the wages in America, the mean wages in America, um, and we like to, to um, estimate those, wage, uh, those main mean wages. And if we like to do this, if we like to compare all these racial categories, uh, we might take a so-called regression analysis. And the regression analysis has a equation, and it says that we have income over here, and we have the four racial categories uh, on the right side. Now, if we use what is called dummy coding, then we must take a reference category. 
We must take one of the four racial categories as a sort of point of reference. Uh, and that is called dummy coding. Now, if we would take the white population as a point of reference, then B1, over here in this regression equation, would mean the mean wage uh, among whites. Okay, that's nothing interesting. But B2 uh, is more interesting because it will uh, tell you uh, what the mean uh, wage difference is, the so-called wage gap between whites and blacks. And B3 is the mean wage difference between whites and Hispanics. And B4 is the mean wage difference between whites and Asians. Okay? So let's take a look how this works. We take the whites as reference and we have the mean wages over here. These are uh, observed mean wages in America. And we see that the white population on average has a mean wage of 55 grand. Okay, that's before taxes. It's a yearly income. And we see that the black population on average earns a lot less. It's 35 grand. Same goes for the Hispanics, also 35 grand. And we see the Asians do a little bit better than the white population, which came a little bit as a surprise to me, but I'm not really uh, into this. Uh, I know not much about the American situation, but the Asians do better. They, are, uh, they earn 60 grand on average. Now, if we take a look at the regression effects, the regression equation I just showed you, then we have B1 over here, and it's 55 grand. It's equal to the mean wage we, we have over here. And here, I'm um, sorry. Here we have the mean wage of the black population, which is 35 grand, and the difference between 55 and 35 is 15. So we get, as a result, the regression effect will be minus 15. Same goes for the Hispanics. <laughs> oh, you're right, it's 20, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm, I'm not a statistician. <laughs> Same goes for the Hispanics, also 20, and for the Asians, it's five. I did that correctly, plus five. Okay. So these are the results of the regression equation. Now we know um, how large these wage gaps are between whites on the one hand and the other categories on the other. But the question may arise, and many students ask me this, if I explain to them dummy coding, many students ask me, why did you take whites? Why did you take that as a point of reference and all the other coefficients are deviations from 55? Why did you do that? And I have to say that the answer uh, is difficult. I could have taken the, the black population as well or I could have taken the Asians as well. So with dummy coding, in many cases, choosing a reference category may sometimes be arbitrary. So that whether I pick the whites, blacks, Hispanics or Asians, well, it's up for discussion. Okay, now we go to another solution to this because we also have effect coding. We have, we have dummy coding and we have effect coding as well. Um, and we might like to use uh, not a racial category as a reference, um, but we might take none of these four categories. And we might take uh, the mean of the mean wages uh, within these categories. Let me explain. We have again uh, the mean wages over here, 55 grand, 35 grand, and 60 grand. And we might take the mean of means. So we take 55, 35, 35, and 60, and we'll divide it, uh, this, this number by 4, and we get 46 grand. I hope I calculated that the right way. So we have 46, and this is called the grand mean. In Dutch, it's called ongewogen gemiddelde. And in many cases, this will be a fine solution, because now we can take this as a reference category and we can say, okay, how much do these racial categories differ from this grand mean? That is called effect coding. Now, let's take a look. Now, if we take uh, 46, the grand mean as a point of reference, and we take the difference we get for the white population plus nine grand. That is the deviation from the grand mean. And for the blacks, we have minus 11 grand. Same goes for the Hispanics, and for the Asians, we have plus 14. So that, 
these numbers here are the outcomes if you run a regression analysis using effect coding. We get the differences here. We have an example of the whites with 55 grand. We have the grand mean of 46, and the difference will be plus 9,000, minus 11 grand, minus 11 grand, and, my, and plus 14,000. So the deviations I just showed you here, all of these are deviations. Uh, they are deviations from the so-called grand mean. And you can use this effect coding, you might use this, if the, number of ca the, the numbers within the categories, the number of observations, are roughly the same. Now for me, it came a little bit as a surprise to find that in America, the uh, number of whites expressed as a proportion or as in a percentage is 73. And the black population is about 10% of all the Americans. Well, to me, that came as a surprise. I thought that it would be much higher, but it isn't. The black population is about 10% of all the Americans. Same goes for Hispanics. It's about 12% of all the Americans are Hispanic. And the Asians are about 5%. So in other words, if we would use effect coding and use this uh, grand mean, this ongewogen gemiddelde, if we would use that, we ignore that whites, blacks, Hispanics, and Asians have different numbers. We just assume or take for granted that they're all about equally sized. And if you do this, you make a mistake, right? I, I learned this from my son. <laughs> okay. So if we know that the numbers of observation per category are very unequal, like the racial distribution in America, the grand mean, in my view, is inappropriate. You just can't use it. Well, you can use it, but you make an error because you assume that every category is equal, um, equally large. So what we do normally, and everybody who went to elementary school has calculated the uh, arithmetic mean, het rekenkunde gemiddelde, at gemiddelde, everybody knows that. To calculate this, you just take 55 grand, that's the mean income among whites, and you multiply it uh, with the number of observations, in this case, in proportions, it's 0.73. And we take 35 grand, the income of the blacks, multiplied by, by 0.10. Hispanics and the Asians are about 5% of the population, so we take 60 grand times 0.5, and the result is 50 grand. So the difference between unweighted mean and weighted mean is about $4,000. That's roughly one monthly salary. So and because there are the numbers are very different, I think this is a far more interesting number. This is the mean income in America, taking into account the different numbers of observation. And uh, in statistics or in mathematics, this, these uh, numbers are over here are called weights. And that's the reason why we use this new uh, way of expressing the differences as weighted effect coding. So we have effect coding, grand mean as a reference, and we have the sample mean, mean as a uh, um, reference, um, and that is called weighted effect coding. OK, let's take a look. Um, if you take the regression uh, uh, effects now, if you would use weighted effect coding, which is something new, and we implemented this in software, uh, you get uh, something quite different. We get, for the whites, we get a regression uh, a coefficient of 5 grand, because the, grand, the sample mean uh, is now 50 grand instead of 46 grand. And we have, for the blacks, we have minus 15, Hispanics minus 15, and for the Asians, we have plus 10. These are the regression outcomes if you use weighted effect coding, and they are quite different from the outcomes when you use effect coding, which is, I believe, it's the wrong way. So in my view, if you don't want to use a reference category, then this is the way to go. Use weighted effect coding. So here we have uh, the regression coefficients, as I told you. Okay, well, 